pretty care blood, ain't you? Must be my imagination. It's got a death curse. Hello? Who's that? Come back again. And he's still there. In the early 70s, I made a uh, horror film with Wes Craven called Last House on the Left, which had some notoriety and some success uh, initially. But as a byproduct, uh, both Wes and I got reputations as being people that would produce really disgusting stuff and cheap, you know? <laughs> so if, if you want to puke in a bucket and cheap, you know, call Sean and Wes. Finally, I got to do uh, some kids' films in the late 70s. I did a, uh, a Bad News Bears kind of rip-off film called Here Come the Tigers. And after we did that, we had this notion of doing sort of a, a soccer movie. Well, at that point, uh, um, everybody was saying what America really needs now is a good family film. So Sean and I set out, and uh, he got the funding, and God love him, we made two wonderful family films. And uh, once again, America had lied. It did not want to see good family films. <laughs> Evidently, uh, America wanted to see Halloween, uh, because in 1979, Halloween was absolutely raking in uh, the box office dollars. I was playing around with titles. And one of the titles that just came into my head at the time was Friday the 13th. And out of frustration, I said, Friday the 13th. Christ, if I had a picture called Friday the 13th, I could sell that. He said to me, I'm going to make the scariest picture ever made. It's going to be called Friday the 13th. So, and I said, well, who am I to question? And I went to school basically on the movie Halloween, saw it once, figured out um, what a good horror film would need. First of all, you have to start with a prior evil, something that uh, happened a long time ago that was really bad. Then you have to have a group of adolescents, or slightly post-adolescents, who are in an environment in which they cannot be helped by adults. The other thing I learned from Halloween is that if you make love, you get killed. So I had to figure out a way to do that. We took out this ad in Variety that said, Friday the 13th, the most terrifying film ever made, was a great big block letters crashing through a mirror. He was very open about the fact that he was definitely going to make people sit up and watch this movie. Ta-da! Sean and I talked about all the possible places that it could be, and I came up with a summer camp. How far is it to Camp Crystal Lake? They have to watch themselves be thinned out one by one. <laughs> I had some theater owners from Boston who had invested initially in Last House on the Left. And they came in for a meaningful chunk. With all of that stuff in hand, suddenly I was able to raise the money to make a picture called Friday the 13th. To my way of thinking, Friday the 13th was very much like, hey, kids, we're going to make a movie. Do your best, all right? Very fortunate to run into uh, Barry Moss uh, in New York, uh, work with Julie Hughes. And they were primarily theatrical casting agents, but they were able to help us um, cast the movie. As soon as I think they were associated with it, it brought it up a notch. Every actor and actress that was under 21 was trying to get an audition. The cast of Friday the 13th, to me, seemed to be just a bunch of kids that were looking for their first break. You think you're going to last all summer? I don't know if I'm going to last all week. I was trying to make the break from commercials into television, into film. So you would do anything and everything you could to get some kind of role on a film. And I actually danced for about four weeks on Saturday Night Fever. For me to actually get this without a theatrical agent was pretty amazing. I mean, those things just don't happen. You know, I was a Burger King girl the year before. One of the things that Barry Moss brought was uh, Harry Crosby, who, as it turns out, was Bing Crosby's son. Kevin Bacon was in our movie. It's going to storm. <laughs> tear down that valley like a son of a gun. I know for Kevin Bacon, it was like his fourth. He'd already done Animal House. He was a kid from New York trying to figure out how to make it happen. You're going to camp blood, ain't you?
When we were doing the setup for the movie, we, we hired this guy named Walt Gorney. The function of Crazy Ralph is to set the tone for this horrible geographic area. You're doomed if you stay here. We cast nobody that wasn't willing to go out and get dirty and have special effects applied to them and just accept it on faith we're going to go out and do all this stuff but i but i swear to god it's going to be okay but when you've had a dream as long as i have you'll do anything everybody was young and overacting <laughs> terribly overacting everybody hey wasn't that the road up for camp crystal lake back there we shot this picture in a tiny little town in new jersey called blair's town we shot completely below the radar out at a Boy Scout camp. Camp Nobi Bosco, that's what it was, which stands for North Bergen Boy Scouts. Camp Mud, they're opening that place again? We had to wait for the Boy Scouts to all go home and go back to school before we were able to come in, make a contribution to the Boy Scouts, and camp out there basically for three weeks or four weeks while we shot the movie. As uh, Steve Cabin B's already. There was not one person that ever really complained about how cold it was and wet and, and, and just dreadful. Jack and Marcy are gonna get drenched. We didn't actually have a real whole script. We, we would get pages that day and they would change what we did have. They'd change them the next day, you know? So it was kind of like, we got to find out as we were going along. How are you? Well, I, I'm Mrs. Voorhees. The image always was of me was that I was this girl next door. And of course, I've always said that there wasn't a gal that ever lived next door to me that I wanted to be like. <laughs> I'm not afraid. Betsy Palmer had worked in television on the morning talk shows, and she was squeaky clean. Comparable to the Doris Day type. I was always trying to prove that I wasn't the girl next door. I had a Mercedes, which I'd had a number of years, and it broke down on the Connecticut Turnpike. So I said to myself, I need a new car universe <laughs> and I went out to go shopping for a car and I found a little Scirocco I thought oh that's what I want I want a cool little car like this and so the phone rang and my agent said how would you like to do a movie I said great that'll pay for the car that I want to buy and he said well that was, now there's just one other thing I have to tell you he said it's a horror film and I said oh no so the script came and I read it and I said what a piece of what monster could have done this? And I said, oh, nobody is ever going to see this. It will come and it will go and I'll have my Scirocco. The real iconoclastic part of Friday the 13th was taking mom an apple pie and standing it upside down and saying, you've never seen a mother like this. I didn't get up there and try to play a bad lady. In fact, I tried to play a good lady who'd gone a little wrong, but that was because she wanted to save more children. She didn't want them to die. Oh, I couldn't let them open this place again. This was the mother that I never had, the one who would protect you and go to any horrible lengths to do it. <laughs> and you do, you want to do that. You want to all of a sudden get very kind of, ha, 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 I'm that bad lady. Ooh. And I was beginning to do that, and Sean would say, no, 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 Betsy. He said, just play it straight. That's all. Kill her, Mommy. Kill her. Kill her, Mommy. Kill her. What we needed to do was create something that had an element of circus in it. <gasps> but we had no idea how to do any of this stuff. I think Steve Miner uh, said uh, we should hook up with uh, Tom Savini, who had worked with George Romero on Dawn of the Dead. He would be looking through my screenplay and be saying, well, I notice you have a, a, a hatchet in the face on page 38 or whatever it was. Um, and he turned to Sean and said, do you want a fake face and a real hatchet or you want a fake hatchet and a real face? Savini just said, anything's possible. 